Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this QuickBooks tutorial. Today we're talking about seller financing or owner financing. So when you own a property and you sell it to somebody and you hold the note or you're lending them the money to make that purchase. So it's often called seller financing. And it's one of those real estate strategies that um, you might want to get into if you're looking for more passive income. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this in QuickBooks, show you how to record the transaction. To demonstrate this, I'm actually going to follow up with an example we had on a previous video about doing a flip project, okay? So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet, but we're going to assume that we've purchased a property, we've done a renovation to it, potentially to flip it, right? And when we sell it, we are going to uh, hold the note or hold the mortgage, do seller financing, okay? So let's go into QuickBooks and I'll demonstrate this for you. Now, as a recap, I wanna show you the project that we completed. It's this 264 Union Rehab, okay, where we spent some money on, we purchased the property for 125,000, we spent 2,800 in buying costs, we spent 49,255 in rehab costs, and then a, a little bit extra to hold the property as well. Okay, so we're into it. 177,401. Now I'm using projects and you'll see on the previous video how I do that. You don't need to use projects to, to track that, but that's how I was doing it. Okay, the other thing that I was doing was I was tracking my renovation as expenses. So if I pull up a profit and loss, you'll see those, and this is a profit and loss for just this project, you'll see that I have um, my expenses and my P&L here. Now that might be something you want to do temporarily while you're flipping the property to see that report. You could, of course, be putting them to your cap, uh, your capex in, in your fixed assets. Ultimately, those are probably going to go to your fixed, uh, your fixed assets. But if you're flipping the property quickly, you might keep them on the P&Ls. That's a discussion for you to have with your CPA. Right now, I have them on my P&L. I am going to demonstrate how we transfer these to the balance sheet. Okay, and so one of the cool benefits of using the projects uh, portal is we're able to get that cool view that I was just showing you. However, that assumes that all of the renovation stuff is all expenses, okay? So you can make use of that, but if you wanna transfer it to your balance sheet, I'm gonna show you how to do it. And when I say transfer it to your balance sheet, so if I looked at my balance sheet, right now, all I have on there is one transaction when I purchase this property. So if I look at this journal entry, I purchased the property for 125,000, I had my buying costs in there, and then I took out a hard money loan and I came out of my pocket $50,000. So my balance sheet, again, just for this property right now, just shows the negative 55,000 or 50,000 and the hard money loan, okay? But if I, I wanna transfer my cost of goods sold to my balance sheet, okay? So I'm gonna do that with a single journal entry. And when do you do this? You pretty much do this after your property is complete or at the end of the year, okay? So I'm gonna do a simple journal entry to add uh, these expenses, not all of them, but some of these expenses to my balance sheet. When I say not all of them, these holding costs, those aren't gonna transfer, okay? Those are gonna stay as, a, as an expense that would be deducted immediately. Why are we transferring to our fixed assets too? Let's just talk about that briefly. If we hold on to the property for a long period of time, you know, through a tax year, we're not going to be uh, taking the deduction of everything we spent on the property. Instead, with our CPA's help, we're going to be depreciating that property over time, okay? So let's transfer everything to our fixed assets first, and then we're gonna sell this property, okay? Now I'm going to do, I'm gonna say that the renovation ended um, on July 31st, 2021, okay? So the first thing we gotta do is we gotta add these to our fixed assets, okay? So I have uh, my chart of accounts set up where I have buildings and I have sub, um, I have sub accounts for that, right? So I have my buildings original costs in there and I'm gonna debit it the exact amount that I paid for it, which is 125,000, okay? And I am going to continue using my project tracking. I don't really need to, but I'm just gonna do that to make sure my reports stay. Okay, I'm gonna put in my, um, my purchased costs original, okay? And that was, it looks like 2,800. So I could have done this when I purchased the property, but again, I wanted it to show up on the projects app. This won't show up on the projects app, okay? And then the one that I wouldn't have done when I purchased, which is new from when I renovated, is my capital improvements, my CapEx. So I take, I think I had 49,255 that I put into it, okay? And then, so we've added them to our balance sheet. Now we just gotta take them off of our profit and loss. 
So we can do our purchase, our purchase price, okay, our buying costs, and our, um, what did I have? I think I had rehab costs, right? 49.255, yep. And I can copy this down. Okay, so again, all I'm doing here is making that transfer from my P&L to my balance sheet. Again, do this with guidance from your CPA, okay? Um, don't just do it without talking with them, but basically all we're doing is we're taking it from expenses to our balance sheet. So I'm gonna click save and close. Okay. So now my balance sheet looks a little bit different. It shows that I own property in the amount of 177,000. Now the market value might be and is probably way higher than that, but that's my book value, okay? And then I still have the negative 346.66, which is from um, my holding costs. You can see my zeroed out purchase buying and rehab costs. Okay, so now I'm ready to sell this thing. So let's say I sell this property. What's gonna happen during the sale? And um, how do I record that? Well, for one, we're gonna wipe out our hard money loan, right? Hopefully we're selling this for enough to wipe out our hard money loan. We're also going to be wiping out our real estate because after we sell it, we don't own it. However, we are going to have, uh, we are gonna hold a note for seller financing, okay? So I'm gonna record that sale. Again, it's kind of simple transaction. We're gonna record that sale as if we are lending money, all right? So how much should we sell this thing for? Let's say that we did really well on it. I'm just throwing this out. We, I don't know how this will work out, but let's say that um, we sold this thing for 325, okay? 325,000, nice big number, way more than we put into it. Really good project, okay? So let's record that transaction. So we're gonna do a journal entry, okay? And let's do this as of, let's go 9-30-2021. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to again zero out our balance sheet, okay? So we just added things to our balance sheet, now we're gonna zero it out. So how do we do that? We take our building's original cost. Now if you had depreciated it, we would also mess with your depreciation here as well. Okay, um, and then let's go, um, just checking something here on my amounts. Let's go with our, our purchase costs. Okay, um, original, I think we had 2,800. And then our CapEx we have to zero out as well. Okay, so that we had 49,255. Okay. Class, customer, whichever you're using, you might be using both. I tend to use both a lot of the time if I have no other reason to keep those open. Okay, so that's gonna zero out my um, that's going to zero out my fixed assets. Now let's again say that I sold this thing for 325, okay? So if I sold it for 325, I would need to add a realized gains somewhere, okay? But before I do that, I'm going to wipe out my hard money loan as well because I know that I have a hard money loan that is going to be paid off when I'm done with this. So my hard money loan, the balance was 77,800, okay? And I probably have to pay interest on that at the end, okay? So maybe that's how I was doing it, that, I, that they're gonna have me pay like 8,000 in interest when it's due. That might be the case, I'm not sure. Okay, so we can put that in there. Now you might wanna do, actually no, you know what we would do? I think I set up a separate account for this. I think I had uh, interest or debt service. Yep, flips debt service, so I'm gonna use that one, okay? So we've wiped that out. Uh, we probably also have some selling costs, right? Maybe we paid a realtor, okay? So I'm gonna bring in some selling costs. Let's say that it was you know, 325,000 times 6%. Let's say that I paid my realtor 19,005, okay? And then we probably have some other selling costs as well, transfer title, things like that. Let's say that I have um, another, you know, um, 8,800, okay, in selling costs. Okay, so we're getting there, right? Uh, we are getting there. So 
again, let's say I sold this thing for $325,000, okay? So how do we account for that? Well, we need to recognize some revenue here. So I'm gonna have realized gains come up, okay? And actually we can use, um, flip, uh, we can use our sale price on flips actually. Yeah, let's use that. I think that's revenue, okay? And so this is actually gonna be our net sales price. So we're gonna take what we sold it for minus what we have into it, okay? So it's the net, so it's 325 minus 177.055, okay? That's our, um, our revenue. And actually it's kind of like the net revenue, right? Okay. And so what does that leave me with? Well, how is this person making this purchase? Maybe I require them to give me some cash at closing, right? So let's say that I do require them to give me um, a little bit of cash at closing. Let's say that I require $20,000. Actually, I put 50 into this. Let's say that I require way more. Let's say 80,000. Again, this might not be realistic. I don't really know, but this is just, you know, the, the example will flow, all right? So that would leave my hard money loan being the difference, okay? So a hard money loan, or I say hard money loan, seller financing is going to be on your fixed assets account, or at least your assets, okay? So you're gonna want some kind of account to deal with that. So you might have seller financing, and maybe you wanna label it 264 Union, okay? And you can create that account. And this account is a other asset and it is, well, we could do, we could just do something like that, seller financing, save and close it. And then that is the net that I would be lending to the person who just purchased it from me, okay? So here I'm zeroing out my balance sheet again. I'm getting rid of my hard money loan. I'm recording some other fees that I have to pay. There's my net sale price. I need to recognize that income. I'm getting 80,000 in cash and 130,000 is staying out as a loan. Okay, again, this is like a really good deal. So it looks really great. Okay, let's save and close this and see what it does to my balance sheet. Okay, so now I have positive cash in the bank. I've zeroed out my building. I don't own it anymore. However, I do have a loan out for it. I've zeroed out my hard money loan and I've made some money on this. And I'll continue to make money as I get interest payments for that seller financing. Again, this deal might be a little bit too, uh, too good to be true, but that's exactly how you would deal with it. Okay, so now this property is off my balance sheet. I have the loan here and I have some income. I do wanna check out what the projects looks like after the fact too. Let's check that out. So I can take my projects here and then I have, here's the income I made off the sale, less my costs. Yeah, so this is actually not telling, yeah, this is telling the story. Basically, it adjusts the income though. So what I mean by that is like the revenue would probably be higher and the cost would be higher. The net profit's always gonna be the same, but it does make that adjustment. Okay, so uh, that's how you do it. That's how you do seller financing. If you're getting into seller financing, you have any questions on that, feel free to let me know um, and, and I can help you out. And if you have questions specifically on, um, getting payments, getting loan payments from your customers. We have a really cool app that we're starting to work with called AutoSync. I'm gonna have some demos out on that uh, in the upcoming videos, but you can create a subscription, it's a quote subscription for your customer to pay you the debt servicing fee on a monthly basis, all right? I'm gonna have that out, all right? But until then, let me know if you have any questions on this, any uh, specific scenarios that I didn't cover and I can do a follow up on it. And always check out our free resources available at IncomeDigs.com and I'll see you in the next video.